Thanks so much for popping into the Felt Hub. It is fabulous to have you here. And today I am bringing you all the colour. We are going to be making this gorgeous British seaside scene. It's based on Cornwall, but this could be anywhere along our fabulous coastline. If uh, you want to watch the full tutorial, then I shall pop the links in the description below and stick a link on the end. But this is a great time lapse to give you a really good idea of what we're going to be making, what you need and how it's going to be made. But if you could just do me a huge favour before we go any further, just hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because if you don't hit that notification bell, you won't know of the new tutorials that pop up on a regular basis. Today I'm going to be working on a piece of linen and I've traced my design onto that. It's an, quite an open weave linen, quite thin or a calico would work just as well. And that means that the needle will push through that material quite easily. You don't want it too thick because that will quickly blunt the needle and becomes hard work. I'm using a mixture of carded wools and wool tops to create all these gorgeous colours for the sky, but in particular the houses. And that is where we really start to see the colour pop. It's an absolutely gorgeous finished piece. Take you a few hours, but it's not difficult. Just got to take your time and work through the different sections. As you can see here, I am just laying down the sky. It's just really thin pieces of carded sort of sky blue wool. And I am just working around the area that I have created for the sky. You only need um, a 38 star or a 36 felting needle for this project. But if you want to speed up the project and you've got the multi-tools, feel free to use them. They do make a big difference if you are doing a lot of felting, in particular flat felting, which is really where they shine. So I have a punch tool here. It's got seven needles in, but you can take as many needles out as you wish. You can work with two, four, six, seven, however many you need. As the project thickens up, you may want to take a few needles out. I usually start with seven and then maybe work with five as well. So the important thing is keep taking it off your mat as well as you're working. You don't want it to stick to your project, uh, to the actual felt that you're working on. So you want to keep moving that around. I'm adding some details into the sky here. I'm not going for fluffy clouds. This is quite an abstract scene. So it's just wisps of wool here and there to create um, a, an, an illusion or, or, the, or the, you know, the sort of the suggestion of clouds and what you may see as shadows in the sky. But instead of using grey, I've gone for that really nice sort of vibrant blue purple. And then we'll move on to, to filling in the houses with really gorgeous blocks of colour. And this really comes into its own when we outline it a bit later on with that really sort of dark wool, which will make it really pop. And again, gives it that nice cool sort of abstract feel and then the stars of the show really as well are the seagulls that will be popping in a bit later on um, but here I am just popping in the colours the uh, the roofs the chimneys um, and some of them houses don't even have a roof on as such it's more sort of filled with colour so as I said it's, it's a suggestion um, rather than a, a, a replication of the exact picture that you might have in your head. It's sort of Balamori style, really. And this is just the sort of beautiful colours and the houses that you might see along our gorgeous coastlines. I've just swapped here to another multi-tool which has three needles in it. And I'm using fine needles just to speed it up. But as I said, you only need one needle. There's no need for all the fancy multi-tools, but with this project, because it does take quite a few hours, it does make a, a difference in actually speeding up how long it actually takes. The joy of this project also is that you just can't get it wrong. Because of its style, because of its slight abstract nature, it really is impossible to get it wrong. And whatever you want to put in is okay. If you are already a needle felter, and you want to challenge yourself, then you can add um, lots more details in. You make, can make it as difficult or as easy as you like, but equally, if you're a beginner needle felter, it's just a great project for you also. You know, it's, it's a really relaxing, sort of calming project, and you can just lose yourself for a few hours in the joy of this amazing craft. 
If you are already a needle felter, then just go to your wool stash. You, you only need little amounts of the colors. See what you've got. Grab your needles. You know, find some fabric or some felt to work on. It doesn't have to be linen. Um, you can work on a piece of flat craft felt as long as it's got some wool content in it or some pre-felt. Um, if you are new to needle felting, um, then you can just pop along to the website and you can actually buy this complete kit. It comes as a complete starter set or just the wool bundle if you just want to buy the wool. Um, I will pop the link in the description for you so you can pop along to the website and have a look on there. You can also get all the tools, uh, lots of different wools, carded wools, wool tops, core wool, anything else that you might need. It might also be that you're new to felting, but you've got all that gear sat there just waiting for you to get started. And it's all about just having the confidence to get started. You don't need any skills for this. As I said, you can keep it really, really simple. But if you've got a load of wool and felting needles sitting there just waiting to be used, it's such a shame for them to sit there. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain by just getting started. Everyone has to start at the beginning. Everyone. So don't feel nervous about it. Just get excited about making something. Now, as you can see, we've made a good start on these houses. I'm not going to go through every single house because once you've done one or two, once I've shown you one or two, then the procedure and the technique is exactly the same. So I'm coming to this harbour wall now and I'm just laying a, a really sort of thin layer of carded wool down here and I want it really flat. And that's the, the whole trick of this, this particular piece is it's just thin pieces of wool. We are not creating any bulk. It's all flat felted until we come to the seagulls and then they will be more three dimensional. But this harbour wall, again, there's a great trick to, to making this look like a wall, which it doesn't look like anything like a wall at the moment. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just bordering these edges. Everything gets this, this dark border around it because it makes such a difference. It really makes this sort of painted with wall picture pop out of um out of the scene it's it's just it sort of brings it to life really um so i'm just going around i'm just adding this border and just making sure that it's sort of neatly and firmly attached don't worry about some of the tracing that is actually obscured at the moment we'll just fill that in later but that's just so you know where your design is and then what I'm doing, it's 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 a harbour wall. So I want to give a suggestion of bricks, but I'm not going to fill in every brick because it wouldn't look right. So these are just sort of really thin lines that are, are suggestions of a harbour wall. And once it's done with a few of these lines aptly placed, you will know just as soon as you see it that that is a harbour wall. Um, you know, we add in this sort of rickety, ancient, old ladder in, in a moment, which again, you know, it's just adding in. It's not so much um, detail. It's just those suggestions and it immediately conjures up this this, this gorgeous sort of British um, seaside image. You know, sort of if you're Cornwall, if you're going down the Devon coast, um, Scotland, up on the, um, the coast of Scotland. You will, you will see elements of all those places in this picture. Another great tip I have as well is to keep everything thin, particularly these lines. You want just tiny thin wisps of wool. You don't want thick sort of moustache type lines. Um, you can always add more and that's the great thing with, with needle felting. It's You can always add more. It's more difficult to take it away. Um, but you can always add more. So start slowly and build it up. And remember, look at the houses in this picture here. See how flat they are. And that is what you are aiming for with all of those houses. You don't want any three-dimensional areas taking up sort of the, the, the space. So I'm just going to pop in some rigging on this little boat we've got here now. I couldn't resist putting in the boat because it is just absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's another excuse to add some beautiful colours, um, reminding us of our amazing coastline. I mean, this type of, of um, picture, you know, anywhere along our coastline, north, south, east and west, you know, you will be reminded of something you've seen. You know, whether it's um, Bridlington or Cornwall or along the Suffolk coast, you know, you will all be reminded of something you've seen if you live in this, this, this gorgeous island. Um, 
Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just filling in some colours on this boat and just some little details. So you can see I'm adding lots of colour, a um, little window there, a little window here, and all these things just sort of add up to making it a really, really beautiful project when it's finished. And I have actually hung it, um, when it, you get to the end, you'll see, I've hung it on a, a piece of driftwood. But equally, you could frame this, pop this in a frame, and it would look beautiful. And you could actually leave the glass front off as well if you wanted. If it was, um, if you didn't have a box frame, you could just use a normal frame and pop it in that and leave the glass out. So the seagulls, of course, it wouldn't be the British seaside without them. And these are our three-dimensional elements. So this really lifts this picture up and it really sort of adds some bulk and some dimension to it and obviously some gorgeous detail and again it's quite abstract um it doesn't it's it doesn't have to be true to life these are just as you can see it's just a very very rough drawing just an, an outline and i'm just working within those lines to maintain the shape and important to remember, your hands are also brilliant tools. So I use my hands a lot when I'm needle felting, particularly when I want to sort of, you know, make something a little bit more pointy or I want to move um, a, a shape slightly inwards or outwards. You know, your hands come in really handy. And I've got this really nice, this is, this is like a, a grey wool top. So as I mentioned before, you can use whatever wool you have in your wool stash. Um, I am using a mixture of carded wool, wool tops, all the all the, the beautiful colours. So I've got a carded wool base here and then I'm just popping this um, grey wool top, this sort of, you know, sort of seagull grey on as, um, you know, a suggestion of the wing. And then just a nice bright yellow or an orange for the beak. My beak's going to be open because they are waiting for chips, of course. Um, so you could even add some chips if you wanted, if you want to throw them a few chips coming in off the side of the picture, um, or uh, the more the merrier. And, and we all know that seagulls love chips, especially they love stealing them. Um, I don't know where you are watching, um, from in the world, but on our coastline, seagulls love to swoop down and steal our fish and chips while we are eating them. So um, uh, chips have become quite a thing um, associated with our, our seagulls. Now, I hope you're really getting a lot out of this tutorial. It would be great if you could push, you know, pop something in the comments. Let me know how you're getting on, if you think you're going to give it a go, if you feel inspired to sort of get creative. Maybe you've never made anything before and this is just you know, the nudge that you need to get going. Let me know in the comments. That would be brilliant. And also you can join me in my Facebook group, The Felt Hub on Facebook. It's a private group and we all kind of just sort of share our projects, do some live workshops. It's completely free. Um, there's a lot of PDF downloads in there as well. You've got access to all the files. Um, it's a brilliant group. And then my blog guide, my ultimate blog guide to needle felting, which is, you know, my my baby. I um, have spent so much time on this blog and I never intended on starting a blog. It started with one project and just took off. And it is really the ultimate guide to needle felting. There are wool guides. There are projects. There are felting needle guides. Um, there are confidence builders on there for you to help you get started. There are guides for people who are uh, more intermediate to advanced needle felters. There isn't really anything that isn't covered. And if there is, you can just message me and ask me to pop it in for you. And I can look at adding that to a new blog post. Um, so do pop over there again, links in the description. And that is the Felt Hub Ultimate Guide to needle felting. Now, my seagulls are sat on these wooden posts and I wanted to make it really easy, but recognizable. So it is just a really light brown carded wool. And again, as I said, that the key to this picture is the suggestions of something, just a hint of, of detail. So as you can see, I'm putting these really sort of loose stripes in and you will see what a massive difference they make in a minute because you can immediately recognize them as logs they you know you, you know that the logs but once you've added these in then the, it really you know it becomes really apparent what they are stood on and then I've got this beautiful aqua 
carded wool. I'm going to fill in the C around the seagulls. You can fill the C in first if you want or work around them. It doesn't really matter. And just adding, you know, this, this beautiful C. And I've got some really nice fibers that I am going to add to this. Again, you know, see what you can add beads for embellishment. You can add silk fibers. I have got some beautiful silk thrusters waist, which are, you'll see in a moment. They are all in the kit and the wool bundles as well. Um, I think there's something like 18 or 20 different colors of wool and silks and um, fabrics um, in the actual kit and wool bundle. So I've laid down that C base now. I'm just going around, just checking that I'm happy with um, what I've done. And now I am going to add, I'm just slowing this down because I want you to see this silk thrusters waist that I'm using here. And I use this so much. I use it for pumpkins. I use it for pictures. I use it for, you know, so many different applications when I'm needle felting. And now in this particular project, I'm using it to represent sort of the waves crashing and splashing. And then I've got this gorgeous aqua silk. And then this is a, a merino wool top, an ethically sourced merino, I must say, wool top that has got silk fibers in it and um, I think I'm going to just use that underneath the boat here just to sort of represent some three-dimensional waves so again we're getting some three-dimensional activity going on here which really really lifts this picture immediately you can see how it transforms um, this 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 wool painting it's absolutely lovely the base I'm actually working on is a, a foam base for this. It's a 30 centimetre by 30 centimetre foam base because I wanted something a bit bigger to work on. But even if you've got a really small piece of foam, you can still do this picture. You just got to move it around. That's all. But always put a protective topper on top of the foam so that will actually stop the wool from poking through into the foam and sticking to that foam mat. And it makes that foam last so much longer uh, makes it much more eco-friendly and saves you some money as well. Um, and again, I've just stuck to this 38 star felting needle. It's a really good all-rounder, this needle. I use it for everything. It's in my kits. It's my go-to needle. Um, you know, it's it's just such a good needle and it's a good quality needle. It's I use the German needles just because the quality is so good. They cost a little bit more, but they are so worth it. And then I've got this beautiful aqua silk here. I'm just going to add a, a few more details, blend it, pop it on and leave it really loose. This, the, this part of the project, everything is quite loose. You are not wanting to flatten everything. You want it to stay raised. You want that C to look, you know, like it's movement. It creates that illusion of movement. And you can see there how, how that is actually quite raised from the actual picture itself. And don't forget, once the tutorial here is finished, you will see the link that will pop up for the full tutorial. So if you really want to, to have a go at the full tutorial and work through that step by step, then you'll see the link. And as I said before, it will also be in the description. Um, make sure you pop across to the website if you need anything needle felting related. Or you can just email me as well. I'll pop in my email address or ask me a question in the comments. Now, I'm just going to tidy up those edges. So we left those edges loose as we were working. And then all you do is you just fold them over the edge of whatever fabric you've, you've worked on. And that will just create a really neat edge. Wool is just so easy to move around and felt into place. As you can see down that side there, how neat it is compared to the other side. You may want to leave it loose, but I, I, I've done it really neat on, on this particular picture. And then I really wanted to add some smoke coming from the chimney. Um, so this is just a tiny wisp of carded wool. Just sort of pinch the end until it mats and then just pop that on top of that chimney. And we're going to leave it away from the picture. We're only felting in one area, which is the, the, the wool that goes into the chimney. And then it really does look like that is a, a, a house that's full of warmth with a lovely fire um, roaring away. And if you want to see what else is going on in the felt hub here on YouTube, then pop in, have a look. There are so many video, video tutorials. 
You'll find Highland cows, sheep, hares, another lovely needle felted picture, North Sea coast, whether you've got five minutes, 15 minutes or five hours, there is something there that you can create. So stay tuned, hit that notification bell, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon.